So now you probably know the difference between depreciation and amortization and depletion. We're now going to talk about how to calculate the depreciation expense using either the straight line method or the declining balance method. And they're both appropriate methods to use for tangible capital assets like equipment or cars or plant. So before we begin and actually calculate that depreciation expense, let's go ahead and talk about three things first you're gonna need, and those are your cost, your salvage value, and your useful life. So first off, the cost is all the costs to get the asset ready for its intended use. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you have certain expenses like transfer taxes or legal fees to get maybe the 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 building in your name or to transfer the title or let's say uh, maybe freight expenses to ship a piece of equipment you can capitalize all of those costs to the asset to get its 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 full cost so capitalize just means you can add it to the cost so let's say um, our cost is I don't know fifty thousand and then each of these things are ten thousand dollars well you're gonna add all those up and then you are going to get your cost which is eighty thousand dollars and that's going to be your your capitalized cost that you will have on your balance sheets for your your asset. Next off, you're gonna need your, oh, I guess I should get rid of that, it's kind of getting in the way of the second one. Uh, you should have the salvage value, which is the value at the end of the useful life. So when you dispose of the asset, uh, you have an idea as to how much the, the asset is going to be worth. And finally, the useful life is different from the life of the asset. Uh, the useful life it just means how long, how long is it going to provide your your company with benefit? Because let's say that uh, let's say it becomes obsolete after 15 years, and even though it becomes obsolete, it's probably going to exist or function for 30 years. Well, since it's only going to benefit your company for 15 years, you're going to use the useful life. You always use the useful life. So you need to come up with these three things and they're usually given in a question that's on your test or exam or whatever. Uh, next up, let's talk about straight line depreciation as we've now finished that little introduction part. So straight line depreciation, uh, let's use an example. Let's say we have a piece of equipment for $250,000. The salvage value is $50,000. And I should say if there's no salvage value, then you can uh, treat it as $0. As, of course, an unknown is usually treated as 0. And let's say the useful, useful life is 20 years. That way we get an even amount for the straight line depreciation method. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the cost, you're going to subtract the salvage value, and then you're going to divide by the useful life. So that's going to be $250,000. Subtract 50000 which is going to give you your amortizable or I guess you should say depreciable amounts of $200,000 and then divide that by 20 years. So then we'll have 200,000 divided by 20 and that will yield $10,000 a year of depreciation expense using the straight line method. So if we actually were to look at, at a graph where we had expense depreciation expense on the y-axis and just uh, the years on the x-axis first year second year third year fourth year that doesn't really look like a one okay um the the depreciation expense is going to be constant it's actually going to be a straight line on this graph so let's say that point is 
$10,000 of depreciation expense. It's going to be constant for all of the periods over the useful life, over 20 years. So the expense will always be 10,000. And let's say that if our, let's say our sales are constant at $50,000, 50,000, so this is year one, year two, then of course we're gonna have a constant amount of net income if only these two variables are in our situation. So it'll give us a constant amount of expense and it will also give us a constant amount of net income, of course, if sales, and ex if sales are unchanged and there's no other expenses. So, uh, the straight line method is very simple and it gives, it basically demonstrates uh, a constant use of the asset over the useful life. So it's not like we're using more of it at the beginning or the end because that's actually going to be the declining balance method. So let's go talk about this. Decli declining balance method, you are going to take 100% which is your, your piece of machinery and you're going to divide it by the useful life. So 20 years, and that's going to give you five. Five percent actually, which is the rate that you're going to depreciate your, your, uh, your asset at. And I should actually, I should have actually said this before, I actually came up with this rate, but the expense, as the title kind of hints at, you're gonna have a declining amount of expense each year. So I'll put the years on the x-axis again. So your expense will be higher at the beginning and then it will be lower at the end. So let's actually take that that amount. So our our we're gonna take the cost which was two hundred or actually two hundred and fifty thousand and then we're going to multiply that by 5%. So we're not going to, one big thing to note is you're not going to subtract the salvage value. Not subtract. When you're coming up with your depreciation expense. So don't subtract that $50,000. At the end, it's actually going to be taken off. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's... Let's go through one year. So one or year one, I should actually say year one as opposed to one year. So year one, and we have our our cost. It's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and our depreciation expense is going to be five percent multiplied by two hundred fifty thousand, and that's going to be twelve thousand. 500 and then that's going to yield a net realizable value of our asset of 237,500. And then in year 2 we're going to take the net realizable value, multiply it by 5%, so 237,500 by 5% and then we're going to get a certain amount of depreciation. I think it's actually that number, uh, 237,500 times 5%, yes, 11,875. So you can see right away that the depreciation expense is decreasing. So at the beginning, it, it's a larger amount of depreciation expense and then it slowly decreases over time. So what this is actually gonna do is it's going to create a lower net income at the beginning the beginning because you're gonna have higher expenses and at the end you're gonna have higher net income at the end because there's less depreciation expense and that's that's if sales are constant and your only expense is depreciation so that is the decline balance method and I should actually say that uh, I should give you an idea of what happens with the salvage value at the end because I said I would. So let's say that the, let's say that, okay, we know that the salvage value was 
$50,000. So let's say we're at uh, $52,000 for our, our net realizable value. So we were depreciating it over time, and let's say we got down to this $52,000, and then we multiplied it by 5%. Again, well, that's going to give us an amount of 2000 600 of depreciation. So what's going to happen is technically our our value of our our asset should be 49,400 because 52,000 minus 2600 is going to be that amount. But with the declining balance method, it can't ever be less than the the salvage value. So what's going to happen is for this last year of depreciation expense, we can only depreciate up to the salvage value. So even though it comes to 2600, we're only going to say we're only going to report $2000 of depreciation expense because it can't drop below our salvage value. I should say that can't drop below salvage. So that is the declining balance method and uh, you might be familiar with the term double declining balance method. All it is is the is the declining balance rate multiplied by 2 and that would be 10 percent. So that's the double declining balance method. It's pretty straightforward and if you're using the triple to claim balance method, you can pretty much guess what that is going to be. It's going to be the rates multiplied by 3 or 15 percent. And you might use the triple decline balance method if you're getting more use out of your asset in the beginning because uh, if you're getting a lot of use out of it in the beginning, you should depreciate it more. And the choice of whether to use straight line or decline balance is the way that you're using your asset. So if you're using your asset uh, mostly at the beginning, and you're using a lot of its value at the beginning, you're going to probably use the decline balance method. But if the depreciation is pretty constant and the use of the asset is pretty constant, then it's going. Then you're going to use the straight line method. Hopefully none of that was confusing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next presentation. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.